So I'm going to hardly mention autism, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to, um, uh, to make the links um, evident as I'm going along. Uh, so the issue, um, the issue of, of special education is um, one about uh, provision of, uh, of, of resources in, and the issues around governance, issues around the curriculum, uh, issues around uh, detection of what the special educational need uh, might, uh, might be and the placement of the individual uh, into um, uh, appropriate provision. And the response to these questions varies across countries and it varies within countries. And uh, frequently, uh, when people talk about this in countries and, and uh, within countries and within professional materials, they talk about it as if it's on a continuum. So there are lots of continuums that are referred to. Even if the people don't use the term continuum, they often use other language that in some way relates to placing people in, a, in the right position. So they use the language of the continuum. And within the continuum of Northern Ireland, you use the term continuum uh, in a number of ways. You refer to an inclusive continuum, a continuum of support, a continuum of provision, a continuum of need. And this is an example of a continuum going back over 50 odd years. This is the classic one that comes from Reynolds in the States. And you have a hospital at the top and you have ha things being handled in the, um, uh, in the, the I'm going to try and find the, the part. There's, Where's the light? There's the light. There we go. So you have the hospitals at the top, and at the bottom you've got the regular classroom. And then here you've got the, the less severe to more severe, so you've got the continuum of need, and here you've got the continuum of movement. You mentioned it, that the ideal is to move people into the mainstream uh, and, uh, and, and to not have them up here in this, this end here. And there are fewer people up here and more people down here. So th this is a, a nice, neat view of the continuum. And this is a more modern one, which is uh, using the response to intervention, uh, which would pick up on a lot of the behavioural stuff that we were he hearing about earlier. Sorry to refer to it as stuff. And um, the, uh, you, you find in, in those situations that you have um, research-based inter interactions at the top, leading down to hospital at the bottom, and you could put the same lines on the side. Okay, so this is a standard way of, of viewing special educational needs and the ways of supporting it. Um, and so in, in Ireland, um, we were asked to go away in 2011 and create a descriptive map of international research that relates to the notion of the continuum and uh, of educational provision for children uh, identified with special educational needs. And we were to uh, determine uh, how that continuum was conceptualised, how it was understood, and then we would, then we would to, to see how that related back to Ireland, um, uh, air or not. Uh, not yourselves. And uh, we did a systematic literature review of, um, we looked at thousands of, of, of papers uh, to identify the notion of the continuum. Um, one of the problems is, is that there's a publisher called Continuum, so we had to get rid of all of them. Um, well, I think we have one from them that was relevant. Uh, and then we have a, um, a, a, we examined the policy across 55 administrations, which was 50 countries. So we did a couple of American states and so forth. And then we uh, had a, a detailed vignette and uh, a questionnaire, 12 page questionnaire study with uh, people who might be deemed experts in, 12, in 11 different countries. And then we uh, visited uh, and interviewed in, 12, in four different countries, Norway, Italy, Japan, and Ireland. And those places were uh, decided um, in, in discussion with Ireland because of relevance to their, their context. Um, the reports are all, all listed there. Um, I say 67 studies, and I've got 67 studies there. Um, the PowerPoint that I sent out said 63 studies. I do wish to apologize. OK. So, um, so this is the, um, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things we found from the systematic literature review. And uh, from these 67 studies, um, we identified 29 different continua. So in, in, Ireland, in, in, in Northern Ireland, you talk about four, but uh, ac across the, the, all this material, we found 29 that were referred to. And we wouldn't suggest that these are all the continua either. Um, we, I've since seen two more publications with new continua, and people sat around in the room and went, oh, I can come up with a new one. Um, so it was, it, it's not difficult, okay? It's, it's a way that we like to think or we're trained to think. So um, one of the problems was, was that every time you took an individual continua, it made you think, oh, I understand it now. And it gave a simplified view of a, of a complex issue. And then what happened was that, that there were all these continua and they were all separate threads. 
And so it made it very easy for people for, to fall conceptually through these threads. Um, we also found that um, uh, since one of the main things that people talk about or have talked about internationally and nationally at policy level and theoretically and, and from research is we want people to work collectively and collaboratively, the notion of the continuum doesn't encourage that. It encourages separation. Um, it also um, it doesn't allow for shifts in thinking. Because what you do is you say, well, we've got the continuum, and a shift in thinking is just something new on the continuum. So it means that you just replicate the old practices, you've just got a new place on the old continuum. So it stops you from coming up with new ideas. And it doesn't offer a flexible way of thinking. It isn't a flexible platform for new ideas, for de developing practices, um, and policy, um, personal responses. So this was, we were asked to come up with a new structure, so we came up and we suggested um, using a, a community perspective instead. And we talk about why, uh, this is a 400 page document, I'm not going to go into all the details, you can read about it at your leisure. Um, but one of the things is that these six categories emerged as six categories that were evident, six types of continua that emerged, and, and lots of different aspects of the continuum. So this emerged from the continuum. This is not us saying, oh, these would be nice. All right, so it, it, it allows you to, you can use the language and ideas of the continuum, it can also be uh, drawn upon here. So we talk about community space, which is concerned with uh, where support takes place. Community staffing, which is concerned with providing support. Community of students, which is concerned with who's being supported. A concern, uh, community support, concerned with the quantity and type of support. Community strategies, which can be concerned with the quality of support, the nature of the, 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 the not, not the quantity of it, but uh, the manner in which that's being provided. And then issues of governments, which is community systems. And the key bit is that nothing that you consider within special education isn't involving all six of these. So you can't think of autism as just, for example, strategies. You have to understand it as all of these things. And you can't just think of a child as there, as a student. You've got to think about the space and the nature of the staffing and the nature of the support and the other students and the strategies. And if you're not doing that, you're going to miss a trick. And guess what? All our education systems miss a great many tricks. So you've got to bear all these ones in mind. And this is what it looks like in our picture. It's a discordant mess, okay? All these, these different things, the strategies, the systems, the space, the students, the support, the community staff, they're all facing in different directions. And what policy says we want them to do is this. We all want them to face each other. We want them to be together. And, um, and here it is in, your, in one of your Northern Ireland, but more recently, 2015, we want everyone to work together collaboratively. So, I will now, uh, in, in the 15 minutes less to me, chase through um, hundreds of findings and try the, the, the important bits I might go to. Sorry, I've got back the right place here. Is these, are the, these, are the rec these are the positive things, and these are the negative things, okay? So, I'll, I'll, I'll do a few negative things, but I might just leave them at the end and go with the positives, okay? Of the, the, the lessons learned, if I run out of time. So, first of all, there's completely inconsistent placement of, of people into settings. Okay, so people are not placed necessarily um, according to the assessment of needs. And you, you can find disjunctions about that in countries and between countries. Um, the, the needs of the at and attitudes of the system fundamentally decide where the child is placed, not actually what the child the, 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 the is, is demonstrating. Um, and uh, generally speaking... Um, there is a strong emphasis on things being organised around impairment types, even though you've got the fact that these, this assessment is unreliable, um, you still have this organisation around impairment types. So you, you're bound to get this mismatch between uh, where people are, are being placed. Um, there is uh, mixed evidence about special classes and special provision. Um, there, there is a, uh, th there's no clear answer of what's better or what's worse. Um, and, and similarly, there isn't about inclusive provision. Um, uh, there are some lessons, but there's certainly that the special classes within mainstream schools and so forth definitely encourage internal exclusion, and that was something that came out relatively strongly. There's definitely serious resistance to reconstructing this space and to using it differently. 
Um, and, and generally speaking, one of the problems is, is if you focus on where to place the child, which space to place the child, then that becomes the focus of people and they go, well, if I put the child in the right place, I don't have to worry about them anymore. And so you come to this, uh, this problem and what happens is children don't move. As much as you said that's the ideal, of course they don't. Once they're placed and you've invested all that money in them being in that space, they stay in that space. And this is across, you know, this isn't just Ireland, this is 50-odd um, administrations. Um, and, and a lot of that's to do with this thing, which we'll come back to, which is the resourcing, the allocation of the funds. And this is a, a big, big issue. So, what did people say you should do? Well, they said you should focus on context, collaboration, and cooperation. And that these are a means to reconfigure and re-understand space and the ways and the places that people are in. They said you need to focus on meeting the needs of all the pupils who belong there. Now that doesn't mean you can't use ABA. But what it means is that you've got to focus on all the children and recognise that ABA may have some value, not just for the ones you've identified as having autism. And you're bound to have got that wrong anyway. So it's going to have other uses. Um, Opening up special schools. Special schools and mainstream schools hate each other often because they're, they're fighting over their resources. Um, and I, one of my favourite things is talking to a, a, a special school teacher who is now an eminent professor, and you'll know her work, and I'm not going to tell you who it is. And she said one of her most terrifying days was the day she had to go into a mainstream school. So uh, opening up special schools. There are some wonderful examples of special schools that have become open. Um, restructuring classes. Um, to introduce diverse ranges of groupings um, and, and trying to find ways to overcome the bureaucratic and curricular criteria that stop that happening. Basically, you've got to see the class as a flexible entity, folks, instead of this narrow thing that, with four walls, that 30 of them. Um, and if we did that, that would help things. OK, I've got to speed up. OK, community staffing. These issues, lots of negative... Um, uh, attitudes, uh, lots of teachers, different views of where the teacher responsibility lay, even if it was in different contracts and it said the teachers were responsible and it was in their contracts. If there was a special teacher who was frequently more trained than the teacher who was in charge of the class, was in the class, then immediately the child became the special tool teacher's responsibility. And if the person wasn't trained, it still became the child's, the, the, their responsibility. Um, there was uh, this, this idea that teachers lack, um, lack training and lack skills. And they lack training and they lack skills about everything. It's not just autism. Um, and the suggestion is, is that what they need to understand is they, um, oh, no, uh, in, uh, is they need to understand more about... Uh, I might be jumping categories. They need to understand more about um, particular uh, impairment types and also inclusive practices and uh, collective uh, working. There was absolutely no evidence that collaboration works, um, but everybody was calling for it. Um, and one of the reasons that there's so little evidence that collaboration works is that no one does it, so you can't research it. Okay? But we all just feel it should work. Um, and of course we've been calling for that for longer than we've been calling for ABA. Um, uh, it's been going on forever. Um, I can give you stuff from the 1880s where people are calling for collaboration. Um, and uh, then I, I've got to move on. OK, so the positives. They're saying what we've got to do is shift from this single teacher at the front identity. And lots of places are doing this. This isn't you know, me saying coming up with something that's not happening. Uh, to, to teachers working across classes, to classes, uh, teachers working in teams. Um, seeking to develop communication between classes and between class groups, um, attending to, uh, to facilitate the uses of resources, curricula, staffing, and that's not just age, it's also to do with um, uh, interests, you know, you, you can have children who are different ages working together and so um, Workload must reflect time to, to plan and mm. must acknowledge that people are resistant to collaboration and you must put it into their contracts. Um, and that if you can open up special and mainstream relationships, that you actually what you do is you automatically encourage inclusive practices. You don't encourage special practices. And that's really important. Um, there's a risk to it and I'll try and get to there if I can have time. Okay. Community of students. 
One thing that was really evident is we say we've got to listen to students. Well, none of that's evident in anything. Okay? So they're certainly not evident in relation to planning their, what were their priorities in terms of what, what is it that they're aspiring to in their individual education plans or their, the behaviours that they're wanting to do. Um, there's certainly um, a, a definitely a, a sense that the numbers are going up all over the place. Interestingly, in England, they've now started to plummet. And the way they did that is they just took them out of the legislation. That, that's a good way. Um, the, there was... A, a range of definitions of special educational needs. So we looked at across 55 administrations, there were 60 different categories of special educational need. Now, that means if I took everything that could possibly be autism and make it autism, and everything that could possibly be dyslexia and make it dyslexia, you still ended up with 60 categories. And that means that every country believed as passionately that one of those categories was as important as autism as you, as, as, as you two believe about autism. So you have this huge brain damage, brain damage from car accidents, a category, incredibly important to some people because it's true, it's real. So um, you've got this, this huge variation and then you come to identifying and putting people into them and one of them, I mean this, is, this was something that I came across slightly later but would have been in the study, is, uh, is that we have uh, in England for example, um, uh, the, the top local authority that diagnoses autism will say that 22.37% of children who have special educational needs have got autism. And in the bottom diagnosing local authority, it's 3.47%. And that's the same for every single category of special educational needs apart from behaviour, where, it's, where it's, it, the, the difference is twice. Four times more likely in the top 10 who use a diagnosis than in the bottom 10 that use a diagnosis. For deaf, for people who are, have a visual impairment, we just don't diagnose pre properly. Uh, we can't do it. We've seen, uh, and this is evident right across the world, is that people get it wrong all the time. Um, there's, and yet it's all carried out by uh, the health system significantly being involved in this and having an impact on the children's lives. What are the positives? Well, the positives are that we need to have a focus on the social um, and that there are places where they start to think about the social. And remembering this is the community of students we're talking about here. And that they are, staffs are encouraged to actually work on and develop social interactions and ways of developing social interaction. Community strategies. Oh, I've gone wrong over. Okay, so I'm going to jump this. Um, there is a, um, down at the bottom here. There is an encouraging number of support systems that are now seeking to support the class rather than the individual. They're seeking to identify what are the support needs of the class and therefore we're going to put the support needs into the class because the view of that is if we do that, the, 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 the speech and language therapist isn't going to spend their life doing assessment. They're actually going to be doing what they can do best, which is work with young people. The person that doesn't have to spend their life doing an ABA assessment, they can be working, delivering a program for particular groups of children in a class. It's a, it's a much more effective use of resource. Um, there's also, it was really evident that parents are constantly being pushed to do all the stuff that, and, and doing it without support, and they need support. And generally, there's a, a focus on didactics and ways of working, remember didactics means something different in Europe um, and uh, other, uh, other, other cultures. Um, but it's constrained, again, people said, by curricula, by formal learning outcomes, traditional classroom methods. And whilst we stick with these, we're not going to be able to increase this flexibility that's required. So I'm going to again jump the, back, the difficult stuff um, and come to the good stuff. People say... They want specialist knowledge. That's what they say they want. And then when you ask the professionals and the people themselves to describe the specialist knowledge, it virtually all comes back to good practice for all. Um, the only one time it was somebody described it as different as that was when they mentioned behavior, uh, uh, applied behavioral analysis. And even that was a teacher in Japan, and even she wasn't too sure. She thought it was probably good practice for all. The Italians talked about ABA as good practice for all and described it in that way. Um, uh, not all Italians, but uh, two or three who brought it up. Um, uh, there is evidence of curricula that can be more flexible, not ones that focus on life skills. Ones that focus on life skills are not more flexible. They're actually just another straitjacket, um, it was suggested. Um, there is a strong desire for resource allocation to break 
the, the assessment and categorization link. They want people, practitioners say, we want to have a break between those things. And one of the reasons is that the analysis and the assessment that is currently done is useless for our practice in the classroom. It doesn't help us teach. Therefore, it's a waste of time. It's only good for bureaucrats. And so what they wanted was assessment process that processes that enable them to envisage and inform their practice. Um, and then we had... Um, this idea is a strong idea that you have these two tracks between special and mainstream. And the problem is, is that politicians, practitioners, all these people have to step across. And you've got the health live in special, and the, the teachers live in special, and they have a different way of talking, a different way of thinking, a different way of being trained. Um, all of these things produce these, these differences. And it's one of the, the problems that you were talking about in the way that it's understood, is that people don't understand it because they're trained in a completely different conceptual framework. Um, and that's fine, because it's appropriate to where they work, but it's problematic. So there were many more calls for them to collaborate, but there was a suggestion that if you're going to make that happen, um, it has to be... Um, uh, you have to... Um, I've got to find it here. Um, uh, yeah, you have to introduce uh, people who are trained to do this, who understand both things and can support people to work across. It's no good in just giving someone a training course separate for an hour or two hours in, um, uh, in, in speech and language therapy or, or applied behaviour <laughs> and think that that will resolve the problem. The, um, the bottom line, I think I'm on the last slide, um, the bottom line was um, that planning and resourcing um, needed to be uh, required at all levels, needed to come upwards. It needed to come upwards from the class, which would involve the child and the school, and go up to say what was needed, whereas at the moment it goes downwards, where someone comes in from outside, evaluates what the individual needs, and they give it to that individual, um, or uh, occasionally to, to a lump, small lump sum to a school. Uh, there was genuinely a, a request from practitioners to shift away from an expert model to mechanisms which s encourage collective support. And the key thing was, was that because we keep focusing on the individual uh, in our, as our means to identify support needs and fund support needs, it doesn't enable us to carry out the collective practices that are the ones that we actually need for learning to take place in a class of 30, 40, 50, 100, 90 probably in Ethiopia. And I think that's it. Thank you.